In this video in the Advanced SQL series, we will look at the Type 1 subquery. But we will also see an example of using the upper function. There's also a lower function, and these are ways to evaluate text in a consistent manner for upper and lower case. And we will delete a record and then undo that deletion using a uh, command called rollback. We'll be working with the HR schema and we will also work with the student teams database. So let's look at type 1 subqueries. A subquery typically appears in the where clause of a query or in the having clause when you have a group by. But you may also see it in the from clause and we'll, you'll see that in a later video. The type 1 subquery is executed one time before the outer query runs and so what you get is a temporary data set that the outer query uses. So let's look at a simple example. We're going to get a list of students working on the auto shop pro database project. So we're working with the student teams database. The subquery, we're going to find the uh, team ID for the team working in the auto shop project. So we see this query here, select team ID from teams where project like, because I'm not exactly sure what the project name is, so I'm looking at auto shop with the wildcard character on either side. And when I run that, I will find that the system designers team is the one working on that query. So what we do to create this or make, turn this into a type 1 subquery is we would do an outer query looking at students, which is what we're interested in seeing, are the student names, where, and in the where clause, we list the field we're going to evaluate from the uh, subquery. So it's where student team ID is in, and it's looking at the list generated by the subquery, and that list is one row. And when we run that query, we will see the students assigned to the systems designer team which is the one working on the auto shop project. So I've switched over to SQL Developer. I'm connected to the Teams database and I'm pasting in the query we just saw in the PowerPoint slide and I'll execute that query. And we see the results here, the same as in the screenshot. So let's look at another example. Let's list employees in accounting related jobs and list their department and location. So the key in working with subqueries, whether it's type 1 or type 2 or inline queries, is the way you decompose the problem. We want to show employees whose job is related to accounting. So in the subquery, we're going to find out what job ID is associated with job titles with the word account in it. And we're going to use the upper function here in the WHERE clause. We're going to select job ID from jobs where upper and then selecting the job title field is like and then upper. Actually I don't have to have this upper function because I've typed everything in uppercase. But if I was comparing from field to field I might want to use the upper function on both sides. This will push all the text to uppercase so we have consistent evaluation because Oracle is case sensitive in the queries. So when we run this query, what we see is we have three jobs, financial accounting, accounting ma manager, and just uh, accountant. So in the second part of this, we need to do the outer query where we list the employee's ID, the last name, the department ID, name, and location ID. So I'm taking that subquery, which we just saw in the previous slide, and I embed that in the WHERE clause. So here I have the uh, outer query that works with employees and departments. And I do a WHERE clause where I look at job ID, which is a field in the employee table, in and comparing it against job ID from the subquery, which gave us this list of three. 
and what I come up with is I have seven people who are working in accounting related jobs. Some of them are in the finance department, some are in the accounting department. An important thing to uh, to know about or be aware of is that type 1 subqueries can be used in place of the uh, option distinct in a query. If I were to show students who did evaluations about their teammates and I did a query like you see here, select student ID, first name, last name from students and evaluations and I've just joined the students table with the evaluations table where student is evaluator, not evaluatee, then I'm getting a result with 24 students. So I'll switch over and run that in SQL developer. So I have the query here and I will run that. and I can scroll through and you'll see that I'm seeing students many times and that's because they've done more than one evaluation. So if the real question here is who's done evaluations, you may not want to see all the duplicates. So one way to remove the duplicates would be to use the word distinct and if I do that, select distinct, student ID, student first name, student last name, then I drop from 24 to 12. But if I use a subquery, it might look like this. I'm going to select Evaluator ID from Evaluations. That just gets me a list of the Evaluator IDs. The outer query would then pull information from the Students table where Student ID matches up with any one of the Evaluator IDs. And by default, you're eliminating the duplicates. And so we see that I get the 12. Switching over to SQL Developer, I can run the distinct query and I get my 12. I will get the same output from Type 1. So why would we care? It's very hard to demonstrate this. It's actually not really possible to demonstrate this when you're working with very small data sets. But as you start working with uh, hundreds of tables and tables with tens of millions of rows, the efficiency of your query is going to become very important. And in general, using a type 1 subquery is likely to be more efficient in execution than using the uh, option distinct. An important use of the type 1 subquery is when you want to delete records but when you want to delete records from a table based on criteria in a related table, then you must use a type 1 subquery. So let's say, for example, we want to see which students uh, didn't do any evaluations. They never completed an evaluation. Notice also that we're switching from in to adding the word not, not in. So we have our select clause showing students where student ID is not in the list of evaluator IDs. If we want to switch from viewing this, and uh, actually let me run that over here in uh, SQL Developer first. So I'm going to first see, just using a select statement, whether we have any students that haven't completed an evaluation, and we have three of them. Then I could change the, uh, the beginning of this command from a select to a delete, and I can do delete asterisk, I can just say delete from students, but it's of course very important to have a where clause because if I just ran delete from students I could wipe out all the data in that table. I might, but the fact is that when I try to run this query as we switch back over here and look, we see the list of students who haven't completed evaluations, but when we try to run that we cannot delete those records because those students have had evaluations done about them. So there's a foreign key constraint that keeps that data from actually being deleted. So I'm going to run this query and you'll see that I have a uh, integrity constraint violation which means that these student records have been referenced by evaluations when those students were evaluatees even though they haven't been evaluators. So let's look at another example of doing a deletion. 
I'm going to remove any evaluation items that haven't been used in an evaluation. So the subquery will list the eval item ID, all the eval item IDs from eval item scores. You might want to look at your data model and refresh your memory on how these tables relate. When I do that, if I look at all of them, I see reliable, contribute, interpersonal, and uh, repetition here, reliable, and so on and so forth. Now, when I put that in a type 1 subquery, I'm saying show me a val item ID, a val description, and this is just to see the data before we actually try to delete it. Where a val item ID is not in, and I'm comparing a val item ID from a val items with a val item ID from a val item scores, I will see that professional, profess, is one that has not been used in any of the evaluations. So on the next screen here, I'm going to run the delete, and all I had to do on that is I needed to change this select clause to just the word delete. Then after I do the deletion, I want to look and see how many eval items I have. I believe I started out with four and that will cut me down to three, or it might be five to four, we'll see. Then there's an important, very important command to know about, which is rollback. And there, this will roll back things such as insertions and deletions and updates. As long as you have maintained your session, you haven't logged off, then you have a chance to roll back, to undo, basically. And then I'm going to, again, look at how many eval items I have. And just looking at script output, we show that one row is deleted when I run this query. When I run the next command, I get three. When I run the next command, which is the rollback, it just says rollback completed. And then the last one shows me that, yes, I've gone back from three after the deletion to the four that I had to start with. You can also use a type 1 subquery in the having clause. This is a frequent uh, use for type 1. So for example, let's find out who got an average evaluation score higher than the class average. So first the subquery will do a select average score from eval item scores. And we see that the class average is 86 point nine roughly. Now I'm going to uh, list the information from students evaluations and eval item scores, connecting my tables in the where clause, doing my group by for student, and then using the having clause average score for the student and embedding in the evaluation in the having clause the subquery where I got the just across the board class average. And when I run that query, which we saw was roughly 86.9, if we look at the average scores these students received, you'll see that they are all greater than 86.9. So that's an important way to, a uh, very useful uh, way to use type 1 subqueries. So what we've covered in this video is the type 1 subquery. We've seen the use of in and not in. We know that the inner query doesn't reference the outer query, which makes this easy to debug. You can run and verify the content of the inner query before you create and run the outer query. No data is displayed directly from the subquery. This applies to the type 2 also, by the way. You've seen an example of using the upper function there's a corresponding lower function, so if you're evaluating text that may be in mixed upper and lower case, these functions will help you evaluate that consistently. We deleted data using the type 1 query and then used rollback to undo that, and we looked at an example of the type 1 subquery in the having clause.